Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly and I am a mixed media artist who specializes in gouache paint, ink, and sometimes I do digital art. In this video, I'll be showing you how I painted the mushroom in this raccoon mushroom trippy gouache ink painting I'm working on. In the first video I did of this raccoon painting, the underpainting video, I established all the local colors of the mushroom using some beige, burnt umber, and a red watercolor pencil. And then I used a damp brush to wash that out. Right now I'm blocking in the colors using gouache and I used a purple, darker purple color for right underneath the mushroom cap. And I also used red for the majority of the mushroom cap and as it goes up I added just a little bit of white. In the underpainting stage of the mushroom stem, I used burnt umber in a lot of the shadows where there's more direct light. And then I also used a little bit of blue. It, it gets a little lost in all the layers of gouache, so I end up reintroducing that back in later. Right now, I'm establishing the basic values by adding white in any areas where there's a general highlight. And I'm really just trying to create a smooth gradient of shadows where generally they will be cast. These are places like right underneath that ruffle thingy that mushrooms have. I'll put a reference photo of what I'm talking about right here. As well as a shadow that is cast right underneath the mushroom cap. So I plan on the third eye of the raccoon glowing. There's going to be some areas in the painting that's like gonna glow. So I want that light to really illuminate right where I'm adding this white right now on the little mushroom skirt. What is that called? I'll put the definition here in like what it's actually called. But yeah, the light source is going to be right there. Um, if it's not 100% accurate, I don't really care that much. I just care just enough to give it some sense of realism, you know? I'm, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm trying my best. And to enhance that look of the light source coming from that direction of the, the uh, raccoon's eye, I am adding a very cool toned shadow right underneath that little ruffle thingy and in between some of the ruffles where there would be a core shadow cast. I personally prefer really dramatic lighting and high contrast, so I'm going back in with a black watercolor pencil and putting that into the very deepest shadows. I'm not just putting it, you know, everywhere. Um, I'm using a blue watercolor pencil for a more general shadow that will be cast and to also add more of a cooling effect which gives the illusion that something is drawn away from direct, intense light. I know it looks a little crazy right now, but trust me, everything blends into gouache, so it really depends on how wet your brush is, but right now I'm using a very tiny brush, but it's very wet, so I'm making sure it gets blended in thoroughly, and in doing so, I'm also doing a bunch of tiny little lines to create a very smooth gradient because I wanted this cooling effect to be very gradual. I didn't want just like a streak of blue, you know what I mean? I'm also adding some of a reddish brown, mostly to the very end of the mushroom stem where like the roots would be. Mushrooms have roots, right? The part that's in the ground, that's what I'm referring to. I did bring that up a little bit and then change my mind kind of and blend it into the layers underneath. Um, and then I wound up having to readjust some of the shadows that I did before because then I messed it up with that brown. But, you know, it's a process. <laughs> 
but some of that blue is still peeking through and I really like that that's exactly what I was going for it really gives the effect of a shadow like it's away from the light after carving out some of those deeper shadows in the ruffles I am adding the highlights making sure to add a lot more white where there's going to be kind of like a rim light I guess you could call it. I'll put a diagram of what I mean when I say a rim light. And then after that I am just blending into eternity while simultaneously trying to create little grooves within the ruffles. Ruffles within the ruffles on ruffles. So many ruffles. This mushroom is just doing the most, all right? I am taking that highlight I added to the very edge, like I said earlier, kind of like a rim light effect, but I'm also putting that on the highest points of the ruffles. This is going to make the ruffles, count how many times I say that, it's going to make them look like they are protruding and they're not just like flat little grooves i want them to look rounded and like they're popping out so that's why i added that white highlight on the right side where the light source would be onto each and every ruffle and i'm making sure as those i'm saying it again ruffles are going towards the shadow that's underneath the mushroom cap i am reducing the amount of that highlight that is used Right here, I'm also adding a line of black just to show that there's a shadow being cast from the little raccoon fingers, paws, I don't know, hands. Raccoons have hands, basically. I am adding a little shadow there and I'm adding a little bit more around the side of the stem to make it more rounded looking. As the shadow is being cast from the raccoon fingertips, I am making it darker the closer it is to the fingertips and then the further away its fingers are, the shadow will lower in opacity. Just a little side note, I am using a clean, damp detail brush to blend out the very edges of those shadows I just created. The closer and the darker the shadow is to the object that is casting it, the harsher the outline will be, and then the further away that object is and casting a lighter shadow as it drags out, I am softening the edges. At this point, I was debating on adding a little bit of highlighted texture to the mushroom stem because in a lot of reference photos I found of this specific type of mushroom, they tend to have a little bit of a textured look to the stem. And I did do that a little bit and wound up not liking it. So I just opted for a more smooth stem versus another mushroom painting I've done where I did more of a textured look. I don't know why, but for some reason, and it just wasn't working out so I just took some creative freedom with this and made it more smooth. Something about that specific shadow on the little mushroom skirt is just really giving me some serotonin, man. I don't know what it is. I'm just like, that was a satisfying shadow to make. I <laughs> Does anyone else do that with their art? It's just like this? area in particular is just yes it's like putting highlighter on your makeup it's just like this is it this is perfection it is complete it is done At this point, I was fixing up the raccoon hands. I'm not really going into detail about that because, to be honest, I could have done a better job on them. I've never painted or even drawn raccoon hands before. And I was just winging it, honestly. 
All right, so here comes the fun part, the mushroom cap. For this type of mushroom, there are white little dots. You can often see these mushrooms in video games, uh, mostly like Mario, you know, like Toad is inspired by this type of mushroom, I'm pretty sure. And what I'm doing is I'm putting down the white dots, even though this isn't going to be the finalized version of what these dots are going to look like and I will likely have to paint over them because of all the shading I have to do around them. I'm placing them there because wherever there's these white dots on these mushrooms, there's little dips into where these growths happen. And that creates somewhat of a dimpling effect, kind of like when you look at a strawberry and there are seeds on the outside and everywhere there is a seed, there's a slight little dimple going into where the seed is growing. Similar concept. So catching the light around these little dimples is really interesting to paint, but it can be a challenge. And right now I'm just trying to map out how the light catches around these white spots. So wherever the dimple is going underneath the white spot, it's going to catch, it's difficult because it's going to catch some of the very warm light, but then there's also going to be a shadow cast from the white spot on the mushroom. And I'll give you some reference photos to show exactly what I'm talking about. But there's a lot of interesting lighting things at play here on a very small scale. So I apologize if I'm not explaining it well. I'm going to show you as many reference photos as I can to thoroughly explain what I'm talking about. <laughs> and since I just love making things so difficult for myself, there's also multiple light sources. So there's that glowing situation I talked about earlier, but there's also a general very blue natural overcast light going on as well that you can see on the fur around the raccoon's nose and it casts more of a blue light. As the mushroom domes up towards the very top, you can see that it cools down a bit and that's because of this lighting change. So wherever it's catching any of that glowing light, I'm going to add more orange and that's usually around the areas that are raised and dimpled outwards of like the crater, I guess you could say as a metaphor, around those white spots. Because what those little dimples are doing is they're creating ridges around the white spots, almost like little raised ridges and it's catching that light. I would also like to know, I'm going to add somewhat of a rim light, kind of like I did to the stem and the little mushroom ruffle skirt, as I like to call it. And I'm going to make that more of a orange glow. But you might be a little confused because where is that orange lighting on the stem? Later on, for more of a glowing appearance that's going to be caught from the third eye, I'm going to make glow yellowy gold. I'm going to add pan pastels, and I love using pan pastels, especially on top of gouache because gouache has somewhat of a gritty texture, kind of like the paper that you have to use for chalk pastels. And I love pan pastels because you use a sponge brush, almost like a makeup applicator you get with some eyeshadow kits. And it is such a quick and easy hack for adding any very smooth gradients and I like to use it on things that are glowing. I used this hack on a painting I did for my dad. This is a three panel painting I did of a blue heron with some roses and the night sky. And as you can see, there's some glowing stars and a crescent moon. And I did so much detail work and I did not want to risk having to get all that detail messed up. So what I did was I got white pan pastel and I just smudged that on to the outer edge and boom, easy fix, didn't risk losing any detail and if you mess up you can erase it off that i love it i love it so much so that is my game plan for the mushroom as well as the raccoon's third eye but we'll get into that in the next video 
All right, in the last video, I talked about how I like making third eyes or any added spiritual looking eyes. I like making them look a little red and irritated. So I always opt for a red base before I add any whites to the corners of the eyes. In areas where I know I'm going to add the most white in the whites of the eyes, I'm adding a little bit of an off-white color and I am slowly fading that out into the corners and leaving the iris red. Then I block out where I'm going to add the pupil and I bring that dark color onto the eyelid fold as well as the shadow that's cast underneath the upper lid. Then I blend that out just to give an effect that there's a shadow being cast from that eyelid. Mushroom eyelid? I don't know. Sure, mushroom eyelid makes sense. Also, I'm leaving the iris red. I thought it would look cool and otherworldly. I mean, it's a red mushroom with an eyeball. It's gonna be pretty ethereal. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, red eyes do exist, but I'm just saying they're they're cool looking. I think they're super cool looking, so I just wanted to add that added extra element to the mushroom's eye. <laughs> and also it matches the whole vibe of the mushroom, you know? All right, so after I got all of that annoying shading done around the white spots, I am repainting them white, like I knew would happen, but you know what? This this is how I paint, all right? It, it, uh, at the time, it made sense to put the white dots down, just to plan ahead, you know? I made sure the first layer I did of repainting them was a little bit more light so that it was showing some of that underneath color and acts almost like a very gentle shadow and gives a sense of roundness and texture to the white spots. And then I'm using a very, very tiny detail brush to add very, very white highlights to every single little dot growth thingy. And right now I'm adding some final highlights to the eyelid and the waterline of the third eye or just basic eyeball on the mushroom. I don't know why I keep calling it a third eye. I, to be honest, I, I don't know. I'm also enhancing that red color. I like having the colors really pigmented, so I'm just adjusting that gradient there and making the pigment a lot more saturated before adding the final highlight. Then for the final shadows on the white spots, I'm going in with a watercolor pencil in the shade Ivory Black, and I'm drawing that right underneath and kind of over the lower area of the white spots, and I'm blending that out with a damp brush that's very tiny, and I'm just doing this really quickly. I'm trying really hard not to get too fixated on this because it's such a tiny area, you know? I do end up doing the same exact technique with more of a mustard yellow to give a little bit more warmth to the whole piece. I think that it will add to the glowing effect I'll be adding later on. And this is how it turned out! In next week's video, I'll go over how I did the ink border for the poppies. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos like this, watch my playlist for more Game of Shrooms content, and I'll see you next week. Bye!